<laughs> well, there goes my wife, Mimi. Hey, this is Mark Comfort, and Mimi and I own Cruise Holidays and Comfort Tours. You know, we started in late April doing these Tuesday webinars. We call them Travel Tip Tuesdays. And uh, honestly, I think it's kind of fun. I've sure enjoyed it. We uh, get anywhere from, gosh, 100 to close to 300 people every time we do one of these. So thank you so much for joining us. Our goal is to bring you important information, good information uh, that hopefully will keep you dreaming and help you to maybe get excited about some sort of future uh, vacation that you want to take. We've kind of had a little bit of a theme if, you're, if you've watched these um, webinars throughout the month of May and the last part of April of uh, sharing um, vacation ideas that are closer to home, destinations that are closer to home. And we believe that's what um, Americans and Midwesterners specifically will, um, well, they're all, all Americans are going to want to stay home a little bit more till they see what goes on in the world when we open up. My gosh, we don't even know when we're going to open up yet with a lot of the vacation flyers. Good news uh, uh, and bad news has come out recently. The good news is uh, one of your uh, the, the keynote speaker tonight, Linda Heckman with American Cruise Lines that does the um, riverways and even up in Alaska, um, will be talking all about the, the opening of river cruising in the United States of America. And that will happen this month, June 20th, specifically, uh, both on the lower Mississippi, the Pacific Northwest, which Mimi and I have done a beautiful, beautiful destination that uh, Pacific Northwest and then Alaska. And they can do Alaska because they do not stop any ports in Canada, right? So it's the Canadians that uh, are keeping the, the big cruise lines out of, um, uh, of cruising Canada or, or Alaska because they do have to stop in a Canadian port because of, um, I think it's the Jones Act. So anyway, here's something interesting too. There were several cruise lines really that announced just today uh, that they will not be going back to any place that has Canada in their itinerary, which is primarily Alaska and the Canada, New England, uh, commonly called the fall foliage uh, cruises um, until October. And I'm not sure exactly what the date in October is, but anyway, all the cruise lines have pretty much um, uh, officially canceled Alaska and any any cruise that goes into Canada until then. And usually nobody goes there after October anyway. So it'll have to be next year um, if you want to do that with a big ocean cruise line. But you'll hear tonight about a very unique opportunity to cruise Alaska yet this year, if you so like this summer. I think that's kind of fun. Well, a lot else is going on. There are some all-inclusive resorts in Mexico that have begun to open up. Um, not uh, yet. Uh, we don't have an official date for um, when Americans can go there. And a lot of it depends on, gosh, a lot of different things. But they're opening up anyway. And to, Amer uh, to, to um, Mexican citizens and um, any other nations that are allowed to go into Mexico to vacation. So that, that's at least a positive. We're hearing more and more things. Now, here is something I, I want everybody to uh, hear and understand. And this is very, very important when it comes to the pricing aspect or the availability aspect. If you're looking at a vacation that has to do with a say an ocean cruise um, or a river cruise or anything with limited capacity, all of these cruise lines, everything we are hearing from an availability point of view will be not sailing at full capacity. And I've heard anywhere from 40% capacity full to 75% capacity full. Um, and there are so many people, and I'm talking about tens of thousands, might be hundreds of thousands of people that have had their vacations um, uh, delayed, let's call it, uh, because they could not go in March, April, May, June, and uh, in, in some cases, July also, right? So many of those people took what's called future uh, cruise credits, and they will be going on cruises uh, with the credits that they have. With these cruise lines, understanding that if 40 to 75 percent 
capacity is what they're going to have and they expect who knows a third to 40 maybe even 50 percent of that availability being used up by the people with the future cruise credits that does not leave a lot of availability so because of that simply economics supply and demand prices are going to go up and we are seeing that um already especially for 2021 and 2022 i i might encourage you to look yet at um, the fall to winter time in 2020. We do hear there's gonna be, uh, and, and we see already there'll be a lot more values if you're the type looking for values to get you back vacationing, then that is probably gonna be the time of the year for you to uh, consider. Well, the other good news I was gonna tell you, Mimi and I are opening our doors. This is kind of crazy. Uh, I say opening our doors, we're gonna go back to work in our office and we're following the mayor of Kansas City rules and we'll have um, uh, limited capacity of people, uh, meaning our staff being there uh, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursdays. And um, But we'll be back to work and we're gonna take all the health precautions that um, we're asked to do and we're going above and beyond. We, had all of our carpets cleaned today. As a matter of fact, we're having everything sanitized and we're, um, we're gonna make sure we're a healthy, safe place to work and a healthy, safe place to uh, do business. And if you uh, want to come see us face to face, I, I, I think that's gonna be the minority of people in the beginning, but if you want to, uh, we ask you to make an appointment. If you do that, please, and bring a mask for the safety of uh, yourself and our staff. That's important to us, and I know it's important to everybody now. Okay, with that said, uh, I wanted the theme of this to be my hosted vacations that I'm going to be doing both this year, 2020 and next year. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I go out, you know, I'm involved a lot in the community and uh, the lake area where we live, and I have people ask me all the time, well, what are you gonna do for, you know, vacation? Are you still gonna do those trips you always do? And the answer to that is very definitely yes. And I personally think there'll be a lot more people that will be interested in taking vacations uh, with um, with groups of like-minded people on small vessels and or or land-based vacations. So we're looking at a lot of different things. But gosh, this year um, in 2020, let me just tell you real quick what we have going at Cruise Holidays. Mimi and I personally have our royal family trip. We hope going to the Baltic Seas in. Um, in August, mid-August, that's uh, not been determined yet whether it will go or not, so we're assuming it will go. Then October 1st through the 8th, we're doing a river cruise in Bordeaux, France, in that beautiful wine region uh, and scenic wine region of uh, northwestern France. <clears throat> then Andrea Redding has a group, Andrea Redding, one of our vacation counselors, has a group going to the Douro River in Portugal. You know, and everything we hear is that when it comes to Europe or internationally, it'll be the countries and the vacations, like I just mentioned, that have one country to deal with, as opposed to like that Baltic Seas that I just mentioned to you that has um, five different countries that we're going to. So all five of those countries in that case have to allow Americans and the cruise lines back into their countries. And uh, we hope that will happen, but we just don't know right now. So the river cruise that we have to Bordeaux and the river cruise that we have to the Douro River, which is Douro River is just in Portugal. Uh, I think that's a very good thing. And, and we do believe that will go also. That's late October to early November. Then next year, I've got the Nile River Cruise on a small Uniworld uh, boutique river cruise. And we've got that almost completely sold out. We've got uh, very, very close to a full ship charter on that one. And that's in February. Um, of 2021. Going to Jordan, which I'm real excited about, you know, I've always wanted to see Petra since Raiders of the Lost Ark uh, in Jordan, and we've had just huge interest in that. Then we move into April of next year, and um, uh, Andrea Redding and Kim North are going to be hosting the Tulip Time um, River Cruising out of Amsterdam and Brussels, Belgium to see all those fabulous tulips uh, in the Kukunov Gardens and all throughout that area. That's a beautiful area of the world. Okay, then we go into summer months. I've got a Sen River cruise uh, that was delayed from this June to next year's June, 77th anniversary D-Day 
that's the Seine River going from Paris round trip uh, back to Paris, all the way up to Normandy and some spectacular stops in between. But Normandy is the highlight of that. Everybody uh, is so excited to, to go to Normandy. And, you know, I've been there before. Mimi and I were there on the 72nd anniversary D-Day. And it's one of the most patriotic times I've ever felt in my entire life. Then moving on, we go into September and Mimi and I will be doing our royal family uh, cruise together on an AMO waterways trip to the lower Danube, which is uh, going to be Budapest to Bucharest and that area there with four days afterwards going to Transylvania to see Dracula's castle and uh, that beautiful part of Eastern Europe. And I hear it is just spectacular. So very, very excited about that. Then Cassie Johnson and Deb Mitchell at our office will be hosting a river cruise on the Rhone and Somme River in Southern France. And as you can tell, the theme of all of these hosted trips will be uh, river cruising and small small ships. We do believe that when it comes to um, uh, people coming back and going on the kind of vacations they've always wanted to, to see the world, the smaller ships will be what people will be mostly interested in first. Uh, we'll find that out shortly. We'll see what people want. Um, next two, three months will most certainly tell us that. But tonight I am so excited because uh, when I started dealing with American Cruise Lines, um, literally not too many months ago, I told them that I needed to uh, take a group on one of their cruises. And so we looked at a lot of different destinations and I said, you know what? I think there's gonna be a lot of people that have pent up demands that will not be going to Europe or Asia or internationally. Let's try something in the United States. Let's do it around the anniversary of our business's anniversary. So cruise holidays started on November 14th of 1988. And this cruise we will be taking on the lower Mississippi on the brand new American Jazz will be from Memphis uh, to New Orleans with a cool, cool itinerary. I'm actually really excited about it. I've talked to Linda, our representative for American Cruise Lines, gosh, a bunch of times. You maybe have heard her talk uh, about this because I don't know anything. Isn't this crazy? I'm a history guy, but I'm a, a, a ancient history guy, I know all about ancient history over in Europe and across the rest of the world. I don't know a whole lot about our history in the United States. I'm really looking forward to learning more of that and experience what the luxury all-inclusive river cruising is, small river cruise ships on, in this case, the lower Mississippi. And I also want to, before I introduce Linda, again, say to you, consider strongly, consider strongly that Pacific Northwest area um, gosh, it's a beautiful area, spectacular area, so uniquely different, maybe than any other part of the United States. And then that Alaska trip, I think, would be so special. And I've asked Linda to touch on all of these, but to put a focus primarily on uh, the hosted trip that I'm doing November 14th through the 21st um, from Memphis to New Orleans on the American Jazz. So with that said, I am going to... Turn it over to, let's see, where do I go to? This is gonna go to Linda Heckman, who is the goddess of US river cruising. Linda, thanks for joining us tonight. And it is all yours. Well, it's so great to be with you guys tonight. It's a wonderful day here in Bowling Green, Kentucky at the Goddess Dome. So we're gonna have a wonderful uh, slideshow here and I'm going to tell you all about American Cruise Lines and let me please start by giving you some information that we are the first U.S. cruise line or the first cruise line I should say to start sailing again. We will begin sailing the lower Mississippi River on the American Harmony which you are looking at right now on the 20th of June on the 28th of June, the American Song will start cruising the Columbia and Snake River in the Pacific Northwest. The 26th of June, the American Constellation will be in Alaska from Juneau. So we are back and we are proud. So you may have noticed or seen today perhaps that our uh, CEO, uh, Charlie Robertson, was on Midday National News ABC with Amy Robach talking about the fact that we are the first cruise line to come back 
and some of the protocol and so on and so forth. So I'm going to give you some of that information to start off with, and I'm going to show you a whole lot of really pretty pictures. So again, we start the 20th of June. Um, our passengers are receiving ahead of time before they ever get to the ship a set of uh, PPE. They're getting face masks, they're getting uh, gloves, they're getting gowns and so on and so forth. And they're also available on the ship as well for them to use. We have voluntarily decided corporate decision wise that we will allow no more than 75% capacity on any of our ships. The American Song and the American Harmony both hold 190, so you're looking at right about 140 if they were full. Great, wonderful, plenty of room. We've instituted a touchless check-in process. So nobody has to touch anything for boarding, for uh, getting off in the ports and so on and so forth. We also are offering medical screenings and we do have medical professionals on board the ship at all times. Uh, we, have, we do have some isolation rooms if anybody does become ill that we can isolate them from the rest of the uh, staff and crew. You will have the same cabin hostess or uh, housekeeper throughout the entire ship and they will clean your room uh, every day, twice a day, all public areas, all doorknobs, all elevator buttons, Everything that's a public area will be cleaned hourly. No public restrooms will be available. It will strictly be your cabin. And very importantly, the ships that American Cruise Line owns and operates were built by us in a shipyard that we own and operate on the Chesapeake Bay. And those ships all have in every cabin an independent HVAC system, meaning there is no shared ducking or shared piping between rooms or in the public spaces either. It's all independently ducked and piped. So that's very good to know that that is happening. Um, we will be having people be pre-screened before they come to the ship. We're gonna ask them the standard questions. Of course, when they come, we're gonna take their temperature and so on and so forth. We're anticipating to have very, very limited delays in any of our boarding process and all on our merry way. Our crew has been thoroughly trained and such in how to deal with any questions that they receive and any issues that may come up. So without further ado, we're gonna start our presentation here. Uh, American Cruise Lines has been in business for 35 years. We are a small independently owned family business and we operate currently 12 ships. Mark, your American Jazz is gonna be the 13th on our fleet. Next year, we will add the American Melody to our fleet. We operate approximately 35 different itineraries in 25 states. So while we are known very much for the Mississippi River, we certainly do a great deal more than that. And the Lower Mississippi is one of the most wonderful places you can ever imagine visiting. It is elegant. It is the antebellum South. It is just a wonderful, wonderful place to visit. And if you're any kind of a Civil War buff, this is for you. So we're gonna start this cruise in Memphis, of course, land of Elvis. That's where we uh, will start the cruise and everybody receives one night pre-cruise hotel stay. Prior to boarding the ship, you'll come in one night early, stay in a hotel in Memphis. There is, by the way, another package that's available that includes a VIP uh, visit to Graceland if you're so interested. And Graceland, by the way, is open again. It just did open last week. The itinerary includes, um, of course, Memphis. It includes Vicksburg and Natchez, St. Francisville and Baton Rouge, down to Oak Alley and Homer's House before we arrive into New Orleans. And that is the American Jazz. She is actually in the yard now and she's coming out early. She's ready to go. All cabins on this ship are outside. All cabins have a private balcony. On all of our river cruise itineraries, we include complimentary featured shore excursions for all of our guests. And they are typically the most popular tours that are offered on any itinerary. There are some that can be purchased on board. Those are premium tours. That would be something that uh, you may wanna do a little over and above if you choose to do so. A signature tour is one that must be booked ahead of time because it has limited capacity. And that trip to Elvis's home is one of those. So here we go. Your complimentary pre-cruise one night at Beale Street in Memphis and B.B. Uh, King's Club sits right at the base of Beale Street down from the Peabody Hotel and across the street from the Rendezvous Restaurant. It's a wonderful place to visit and hear some wonderful music. 
great place. Go visit, have a wonderful time. One night free cruise hostel, hotel stay is included. The morning of embarkation, we will transfer you and your bags after you have breakfast right on to the American Jazz. There is that Graceland Signature pre-cruise package. Uh, Graceland has been once again remodeled, not the mansion itself, but the properties around it. So this includes two nights at the Guest House Hotel. It used to be called Heartbreak Hotel. No longer, it's Heartbreak Hotel is gone and they have built literally a guest house. Full breakfast both mornings if you choose to do so. There's a VIP tour that's included up Graceland that includes cocktails in the jungle room and uh, again a Memphis tour and transfer on to the ship. And that's Graceland. Now I know it doesn't look like a very big place but back in the day when he bought this in the 50s that was considered a mansion. Now we're off to the battlefield at Vicksburg, Mississippi. Vicksburg is where um, Robert E. Lee met up with his nemesis that they went to West Point together with Grant and Grant had instituted the Anaconda plan and surrounded Vicksburg and literally choked off Vicksburg. This battle is very important when you see the battlefield and the terrain around the battlefield you will absolutely be blown away by what these guys went through and by the way this battle was going on the same time as Gettysburg. This is a beautiful little town of Natchez, Mississippi. It's a lovely little place, good food and drink, fun little shopping, just a beautiful little antebellum town, lots of beautiful antebellum little mansions that are around Natchez. This is uh, obviously a wonderful piano player in one of the homes that you will visit. St. Francisville is a very small little town in Louisiana. Uh, I am a shopper, by the way, and there is a lovely little shop that I go to every time I'm in St. Francisville, and it's called My Grandmother's Buttons. Beautiful jewelry, beautiful clothing, some fun little chachkas. It's just a delightful little place. It's also, by the way, where, if you've ever heard of it, the uh, largest prison, I believe, in the U.S. outside of the one in California is, and that is Angola Prison. Lester Holt recently did three nights in Angola Prison, so he could show it off and let people know what goes on at Angola Prison. Baton Rouge, of course, the state capital of Louisiana. The Shipwheel Dock in Baton Rouge, there is literally within walking distance, three shore tours that you can take uh, at your leisure. And we will also take you around different parts of Baton Rouge. And if you're so interested, there's a swamp tour. <laughs> if you need to see an alligator, well, he doesn't look too happy, does he? If you need to see an alligator hanging out in the swamp, we'll take you out to the swamp and you can check out the uh, alligators there. Thomas House is a lovely antebellum mansion. It's used for a lot of gatherings now for weddings and such. And that is very near to New Orleans and very near to the Oak Alley Plantation. We visit both and you will be able to visit both. It's literally a golf cart ride across the levee and yes we carry golf carts so you don't have to walk it you don't want to you don't have to we'll walk you or drive you over there Thomas house is a lovely place to visit and one of those wonderful old antebellum homes that was nearly destroyed after the civil war and has been completely restored and now we're in the big easy so new orleans is uh, culturally one of the most interesting places on earth i used to live in new orleans so i'm very familiar with what goes on down there and what uh, good food and drink you can get. By the way, Cafe Du Monde, for your beignets and coffee is once again open and opened about a week ago in New Orleans. This is also, by the way, where the US World War II Museum is and it is fabulous. And it's there because the gentleman who designed the landing craft and had the factory to build them is in New Orleans. That's where they were built. The landing craft for D-Day were all built in New Orleans. Now, we'll talk a little bit about this ship and, and what goes on on the ship. Every evening, we offer a complimentary cocktail party. This is about an hour prior to dinner that we do this, and you can come and go as your leisure. Um, cocktails and hors d'oeuvres, they will be behind transmission barriers for the hors d'oeuvres, or they will be passed individually so that there's no buffets. We don't offer buffets, and we never did, but if that would be considered a buffet, we don't do that. So you can have whatever cocktail libation you'd like to have, uh, talk with friends that you've met on the ship, enjoy your, 
your day, go over what you've done, what you're going to do for tomorrow before you head into the lovely dining room, which is right here. This dining room is spectacular. By the way, it is open seating and it is single seating. Again, we are very small. We have nothing larger than 190 passengers when we are at full capacity. All of the food on the ships is fresh. There is nothing that is frozen. And we can accommodate any and all dietary needs that anyone might have. Matter of fact, after boarding, we hold a meeting with people who have dietary issues. So you can discuss it with the chef, uh, exactly what it is that you need and are requiring, and we will take it from there and you will never be disappointed. So again, open seating, seat with whomever you want. Come into that dining room anytime between you know, 5.30 and 7.30 and it's gonna be just great. We're doing some alternative dining, by the way, as well, in light of uh, what's going on with the changes. And we will be offering some outdoor dining and room service will be available for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now, I don't know about you guys, but it's 6.30 here in Bowling Green and I'm getting hungry and that looks pretty darn good to me. Locally inspired menus. Every ship has very wonderful world-class entertainment. When I was on recently, the uh, Victory Bells, which is an a Andrews and Sisters inspired group came on in New Orleans to perform for us. They perform nightly at the World War II Museum and they are absolutely wonderful. Guest lecturers on board are experts in what they do. So we put people on the lower Mississippi River that know about the Civil War inside and out and we'll tell you about every rock that's in Vicksburg. You will learn more about the Civil War than you ever thought you would ever learn. Out west on the Columbian Snake River, you will learn more about Lewis and Clark than you could ever possibly imagine you would learn. And in Alaska, our lectures are from the U.S. Parks Department. They are rangers that work in the U.S. Parks Department. Now, this is what Mark was talking about with his upcoming voyage uh, on the American Jazz, our newest ship. The pre-night in Memphis and then cruising to Vicksburg and then St. Francisville, Baton Rouge, Oak Alley which is Homa's House in Oak Alley, and then on into New Orleans. Again, that's a shot of the American Harmony, which is a sister ship to the American Jazz. Now, let me tell you a couple other things. I'm gonna put this slide back up here. A couple other things I want you to know about, and that is that American Cruise Lines is an American registered cruise line. And that means that we play by a different set of rules than others do in the cruise business. We are not allowed by law to make a call outside of the US. We are not allowed to go to Canada. So when we are cruising in Alaska, Canada is not on our itinerary. The itinerary is all inside passage. So you're gonna see all of the wonderful things you wanna see in Alaska. You wanna to go to Glacier Bay. You wanna see the Middenhall Glacier. You want to be able to go to the Valley of the Eagles and see the bald eagles flying. You want to go to Kitchikan and witness the bears and such. So those are the things you will see on these cruises in Alaska, and you don't have to go to Canada to do that. Another thing that uh, about us being U.S. registered is that we are required by law to have a minimum of 75% of our crew to be U.S. citizens. We choose to do 100% U.S. citizens. So all of our deck and engine staff on all of our ships, as well as all of our hotel staff are US citizens. Again, that's very important to us. And lastly, again, because we are US registered, we are required and proudly pay US federal income tax. So those things are very important to us. Uh, we're very happy about that to share that with you. Uh, I mentioned that your, um, there are no gratuities that are offered on or that are accepted on the ship. So you don't tip our staff when you're on the ship. And we have complimentary wine and beer available for you every day with lunch and dinner. So we're about as close as you can possibly come to being all inclusive. If you decide at dinner, you don't want wine tonight, you'd rather have a martini, no problem. Just tell your server and they will bring it to you and they will not ask you for a penny. The food is extraordinary. Again, it's all fresh, locally sourced. We shop a lot of farmers markets when we can in some of these areas. And luckily they're back open again. Mine here in Kentucky are open. I'm very thrilled with that and go a couple times a week. So uh, those are kinds of things are very, very important to us. We do carry a golf cart. If you have a mobility issue, 
Uh, I do, and I prefer not to walk to the top of that levee. I jump in the golf cart and they drive me over. So just kind of little added little things like that that make it a little bit different for us to be US registered. So I think without further ado, uh, again, don't forget, we're going to be doing Alaska without question. 26th of June is our first Alaska sailing. That's a 10 night cruise, by the way, out of Juneau. And we will start our standard seven night cruises on July 16th, again from Juneau, that's Southeastern Alaska. Those cruises do include that one night free hotel stay, complimentary as well. So without further ado, I think I'll pass the baton back over to Mark in case he has any questions he wants to ask me or add anything. So. Well, Linda, there I wanted to thank you very much. That, uh, you, you know, the more you uh, go over that itinerary, the more excited <laughs> I get. Um, about that itinerary, the one that I'm doing in November. Um, and, you just want to go to St. Francis, Bill, and go to my grandmother's buttons. I know you. <laughs> well, I won't go there, but uh, we'll ask him to send you royalties for uh, recommending that place. And I, I really, I do want to tell you, I, I think this is so cool. I always thought that maybe it'd be a little later on in my life that I'd be doing uh, the United States. And I bet a lot of people see in the United States, and I bet a lot of people feel the same way that that time yeah. is now. And so, Linda, you, um, uh, this is fascinating. This will be the 13th ship American Cruise Lines has out. 109 yep. passengers is the maximum. All of the rooms have private balconies. The one thing I learned tonight that is very, very important, I think for everybody, we should all understand this, is that each room has its own private uh, HVAC. HVAC system. And yep. I, I, I did not know that. You, I'm sure you told that to me before. It didn't, didn't stick with me before. But I mean, at this point in time, that's a big, big deal, isn't it? And by the way, people could drive if they needed there, and then of course to get back from New Orleans to Memphis. But um, I'm looking so forward to this. We've had a lot of interest in this trip already, and I think it's a great opportunity to see part of the United States. That really, I've been to Memphis and I've been to New Orleans, and I love both those two cities, honestly. But I have not been. Uh, anywhere in between. So yeah. <laughs> uh, that is exciting. Hey, Linda, let's switch gears real quick to back to Alaska. So sure. uh, where did you say that cruise starts off in Juneau? In Juneau, yes, in Juneau, in southeastern Alaska. Yeah, no, no, no. I know Juneau and I know it quite well. We can get people, fly people from um, Kansas City to Seattle and Seattle right on up to Juneau. Yeah. I've, done, I've done it once when I had to catch a, uh, a cruise in, in Juneau and uh, not hard to do at all. That is such some of the most beautiful scenery in North America up in that area. It's breathtaking, Mark. It's just breathtaking. And catch a can, everybody says, if you're a, a fisherman, that's the place mm -hmm. you gotta go. All you have to do is throw your hook in the line, in the water and you'll catch something. But yeah, you know- The I've, fish will jump right on it. <laughs> and by the way, um, later on in the season when the salmon start running up there, the bear come out. And that uh, mm -hmm. I have not- one yet to go see the bear but that is an experience i really really want to do oh yeah the bears and the mountain goats and it's just beautiful okay and did you tell me earlier that uh, american cruise lines has decided that 75 percent capacity will be by design the maximum uh, you will take that is the max yeah we've decided that as a corporate decision we will allow no more than 75 percent capacity on any of our ships now you have to stop and think about this too because the jazz and the harmony and the song that are for sisters that are currently in the water are the newest ships we have and they're 190 capacity, but I've got ships marked that hold 100 people. The Alaska sailing on the Constellation is 175. So we're talking very limited capacity on these ships. Well, and again, I don't you agree, Linda, that the American consumer is gonna feel a little more comfortable, the uh, smaller the vessel when they Absolutely. go on. Yep, yeah. I, I agree 100%. And it's, you know, it, we know that um, we're doing everything we can possibly do following the guidelines that were sent down from uh, Cruise Line International Association. You and I know it as CLIA, and CLIA worked very closely with the Center for Disease Control, the World Health Organization, and the United States Coast Guard. So, our protocol that we have developed and have to present to these groups is being lauded as the best of the best. We've done everything, dotted every I, crossed every T. 
we expect things to go absolutely smoothly as possible, and it will. Well, yeah, if, you, uh, if you're the first line, which you are, to come out and open up for cruising yes. again, I'll put some microscopes on you, so I can guarantee yes. those ships will be as clean, the uh, crew will be clean. And, and by the way, the crew will also be so excited about seeing and serving passengers again, yes. won't they? They are thrilled and can't believe they actually get to go back to work on these beautiful ships and to greet our passengers and, and make sure that everybody knows how important they are to them. And everybody becomes an, uh, what we call our, our past passenger club is the Eagle Society. So everyone becomes part of the Eagle Society when they come on board American Cruise Lines. You know, and I'll tell you at this uh, time when unemployment is so high in this country, congratulations for American Cruise Lines to make a policy of hiring 100% Americans on the ships. Yep. And I, 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 you know, Mark, this, we, again, because we're one of very few that are US registered, we were eligible to take um, government assistance and we did not do it. This company is very solvent and we've made very sound financial decisions over the course of the years and we did not accept bailout. You know, I'm so glad to hear you say that because that is a question a lot of people have asked me, me and I uh, about the solvency of the companies that we recommend. And uh, you and I had that talk privately uh, a month or a month and mm -hmm. a half, two months ago, because it's important to us. The other thing that we do, obviously, to give customers um, the peace of mind is we sell that cancel for any reason insurance now that covers uh, yeah. if, if you have a bad hair day and you don't want to go, you yes. don't have to. But our, our Cruise with Comfort program is second to none. and is, is designed to give people peace of mind. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a wonderful program and that's what it's for. It's designed to give people peace of mind. It allows them to be able to cancel up until 24 hours prior to the start of their program for any reason. And you, like you said, bad hair day, you got a bad manicure, we don't care. You don't feel comfortable going, we don't want you to go. We want you to be comfortable and enjoy yourself. So that we offer this program exactly for that reason. Well, peace of mind is important. This is uh, uh, the craziest time I've ever been involved in YouTube. Oh, yeah. lives. So programs like that are very, very important. And I and I appreciate that. You know, we, we've talked so much in the past, and I'll use our company as an example, that when a customer comes in and, and asks to price a Mississippi River cruise, say, in the same price as the European River cruise, they many, many of them, not all of them, of course, but many of them say, well, I'll go to Europe and do that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's fine. You most certainly can do that. But I think you have to factor in the, the, the fact that, my gosh, the airfare, if you fly from almost right. anywhere you are, will be, gosh, 30, 25 percent of what you're going to pay to go to Europe, more than likely. Right. And right. you can drive if you want. So there's or a lot take of a train. <laughs> and, well, that's right. And the other thing, too, um, honest to goodness, is um, gratuities. That's yes. so important to have that um, as part of it, because that's always uncomfortable at the very end of the cruise, yes. you know. Even when we collect in advance, a lot of our customers are saying, Mark, they, they serve, you know, I've had such good service that, you know, uh, Ralph or, or Dan, just she's, I want to take her home with me. She's so fabulous. And <laughs> the reality is when they know you have prepaid your people and they're on there and they're happy about their job, that's always a good thing too. So exactly. That unpleasant moment or that awkward moment right there at the end is is important. That's why but, open seating in our dining rooms works so well for us because the staff is not going to ask you for a gratuity. They're not going to accept one if it's offered. So for that reason, they want you to be comfortable and sit with whoever you want. They want you to have a good time. They're not in need of your tip. Yeah, see, I love that. I love that because you, you've seen this. I've seen it a dozen times on river cruises, people, meet people because everybody is somewhat like-minded that goes on a river cruise mm -hmm. and they meet people from who knows where and and uh you know they have a cocktail or something or they go on a tour together and then they're having dinner together or lunch together and and you know they're sitting in whatever seats open up mm -hmm. in the dining room and i think that's a really good thing and i thought that i didn't think it was a good thing with groups earlier on i really do think it's a good thing right now so um, it is Hey, by the way, tell me a little bit more about the outdoor dining. Where where is that? On like the upper deck, or do you have a? Separate... Yeah, actually, it's it's going to be on the um, second to upper deck. On the upper deck is where we have the driving range. Uh, oh, not driving range. Listen to me. The putting. Listen to me. Putting green. Sorry, I always tell people it's not a driving range. It is a putting green. <laughs> I was going to bring my driver. 
<laughs> there's lovely outdoor seating and there's a grill back there. And we were we always had lunch back there as an alternative for people, but now we're going to do alternative dining out there as well. So pool dining will be able to be served outdoors also. Well, and I think we should tell everybody because uh, some places in the Midwest uh, where we are in Kansas City or anywhere nearby, sometimes people think, well, in November, it's going to start getting pretty cool. So I don't know if I'm going to be eating outside. But on that itinerary, Linda, I checked the, oh, checked yeah. the weather when we decided that. It's like in the low to mid 70s. It's, yeah, almost it's a great time of year to be down there. The humidity has broken. It's delightful. And again, like I used to live in New Orleans, so I used to love it when October and November would come out because it was delightful. Okay, say, say pronounce that again. So it's not New Orleans, is it? It's New Orleans? It's New Orleans. No. <laughs> it's N-A-W, New Orleans. N-A-W. <laughs> hey, by the way, I'm a football fan. In Baton Rouge, do we get to go see the uh, football stadium? Yeah, well, it's right there. You certainly can. Absolutely. What, what's that? Ju the jungle is? No, it's not the jungle. What is it called? I don't know. Uh, this, where, the, where the Tigers play. LSU. Death Valley. Death Valley. That's it. Yeah. yeah. The LSU Tigers. Yeah. Yeah. The LSU yeah. Tigers. That, all you have to do in that is to say, I love Joe Burrows or wear purple and gold and you'll be treated great. Well, <laughs> and I, I appreciate so much you um, uh, being with us tonight. And listen, if anybody is interested, interested in this specific trip, again, it will start with that pre-night in Memphis on yep. November 3rd, and then the cruise starts mm -hmm. November 14th, and that's, right. that's in Memphis, of course, and ends up in New Orleans seven days later on the 21st. And by the way, as, um, uh, as we get uh, bookings on this, I will counsel with all of you who uh, book on this to see if it is of interest to you to go in two nights before. It is very definitely of interest to me. Uh, to see Elvis's, uh, it's it's his museum, right? Is where we go on that. Yeah, it's uh, the um, the the house. Of course, it's across the street from everything else. So the airplanes and the cars and all that good stuff are across the street. And what used to be the Heartbreak Hotel. So that you'll do, uh, you know, they'll shuttle you back to the house. So you do the mansion tour that way. The, and I'm like telling you, way? I've done it a number of times. I've been to Memphis. I've been to Graceland a number of times. It looks just like it did the day he passed in 1977. Really? I mean, really? I'm talking really? about the olive green appliances in the kitchen and the shag carpet on the ceiling in the jungle room. It is exactly the same. <laughs> well, all you have to do is call us, um, uh, my assistant, Lynette Talge, uh, or myself, or your travel counselors, if your Cruise Holidays customers can uh, tell you all about it, or you can go to our website, cruiseholidayskc.com. Uh, just go to our group tab and pull up hosted groups, and you'll see that um, and get all the information that you've got a flyer we can mail out to you if you like that too. Uh, but we'll, we'll tell you the deposit amount, when final payment is, how to pay, credit cards are accepted on this, of course. And mm -hmm. Linda, I just, I really appreciate you taking time to share with of us course. tonight about the in the United States that uh, you are doing uh, with American Cruise Line and um, especially the fact that this brand new ship I, I like new ships I think uh, oh, I think that's always uh, I, I think it's just gonna have that new car smell when you get on her <laughs> yeah I know. The carpet will still be smelling brand new and I love it well uh, order I don't know if you'll have mall back on there that Spanish one but you can order some of that oh, don't be surprised don't be surprised. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And I oh, wanted absolutely. to say, thanks for having me. Appreciate you taking the time. And we look forward to putting a lot of our a lot of our uh, passengers uh, uh, on American cruise lines, not just on this cruise. I really am excited about this hosting this cruise, but uh, other cruises that are in the continental United States. One yeah. last time, those of you that have not done the Pacific Northwest, I really encourage you to consider that. Uh, Mimi and I did that in. Um, uh, was it 2006, I think, uh, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and and we re recreated Lewis and Clark's last uh, mm -hmm. journey on their trip and all the way out to the Pacific Ocean. And that was, it was a spectacular trip. Linda, thanks you know so much. Else too, Mark, there's one real quick, one more thing. Don't forget with these uh, fall foliage cruises being canceled on the other cruise lines, I've got a Hudson River Valley itinerary in the fall. Oh boy. Those are amazing. And Incredibly popular itinerary, and that's fall foliage. You know, I forgot about. I'm so glad you tell us a little bit more about that. If you, if you oh, have something. 
It's the Hudson River out of New York. It's absolutely amazing and incredibly popular itinerary. And you're going to get all that beautiful fall foliage all around the Hudson River. It's just great. Well, that is, uh, is so good to know because <laughs> we just found out today, literally, that there won't be mm -hmm. any fall foliages of uh, the cruise lines anyway, that right. American uh, based cruise lines that go to Canada. So that won't yeah. happen this year. So uh, we can tell you all about that Hudson um, River cruise that you would get to see mm -hmm. the fall foliage. Don't you think, oh my gosh, is there any easier, more fun, uh, luxurious way to travel in on a river cruise, Linda? Uh, not in my opinion. And, you know, I've been kicking around doing this for a good long time. <laughs> what did you say? That's since why they call me the goddess. Okay, come on. <laughs> did you tell me you've been around since Jesus was a boy? I have been around since Jesus was a baby, yes. <laughs> a baby, not just a boy, a baby. Okay, that's Linda Heckman, everybody. And on behalf of Amy and I and our staff, what I want to leave you with is if, um, uh, gosh, I've done a lot of study on, on what it takes uh, for this, for all of us to to um, come out of this economy that we're in right now better um, and quicker. And the easiest, simplest way, and I, I, I'll quote the Wall Street Journal when I read that article there that they were quoting from literally the Great Recession all the way through the World, World War II and uh, Korean War and the wars in the 90s um, are, are all of the health problems, you know, that we've had from uh, HIV to Ebola to SARS to MERS. We've all came out, come out of this before. And um, the easiest way to do that is support your local small businesses. If you do that, um, I mean, gosh, you guys are, I don't know, 30 some odd million. I think I read 36 million small businesses. And if we want to keep them all in business. We want them to get back hiring people. Uh, we want them to stay in business. And that's good for our economy. Very good for our economy. It gets people off the unemployment uh, line. And, and then our economy gets better. And it gets better quicker. So uh, we appreciate your business. But uh, your local restaurant, your local favorite restaurant. We're the first people in our favorite local restaurant around our office today. We had lunch today. And um, it, it it was so good to go back out and have lunch there. And, and they had, uh, you know, about 70% less seating than they've had in the past. So, you know, it's going to be a challenge for these restaurants to make it. And I, I uh, Mimi and I think it's our obligation to help keep these restaurants in business. And I hope you'll do the same. Same with all these other local small businesses. So with that said, I'd like to leave you with this. I, uh, saw it on a billboard here in Kansas City and, and uh, the billboard said it's comeback time. And just like we saw as Kansas City Chiefs fans in January and February, where we came back three straight time from deficits, we are the comeback kids. Now it's time for this vacation industry to have its comeback time, it's comeback time. We've seen our bookings uh, grow uh, literally every week for the last many weeks and uh, the cruise lines, uh, our other suppliers are telling us the exact same thing. There is a great big pent up demand and there's a lot of um, concerns and everybody wants to be safe on their vacations. And I will tell you, I personally believe this would be the safest time you could possibly go on any kind of vacation anywhere um, as right now. And I mean, that's certainly, and there'll be a lot of things that will come out and be available that we'll share with you as time goes on. You're welcome. And encouraged to listen to my radio show every Saturday morning on 710 KCMO radio. It's from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, 710 KCMO radio. And you can go to our website. If you miss it, we podcast it. We podcast this. If you've got other uh, people that you'd like to uh, listen to this program that Linda and I just did tonight, we you're welcome to do that. Just go to our radio show. Give us a couple of days. It takes a little while to get, get it uh uh, on on our website, Nicole. God bless you, Nicole. Nicole Busenbach does all that for us. She also puts together our wonderful newsletter. If you're not on our mailing list, you might want to get on our mailing list. So uh, we send out a 16 to 24 page newsletter about every four to five months to kind of keep you up with what's going on. But that radio show or these Tuesday night webinars are great ways to do that. Well, with that, I just want to say thank you, everybody, for taking the time out to join us. I hope you're safe. I hope you're healthy. I hope you're well. Support your small local businesses. God bless you all. And remember, every red light turns green.
talk to you soon. Bye-bye.